Hello and welcome to Sports with John. Today I am going to be playing Swindon Town, my beloved Swindon Town. We're playing a friendly against uh, K.S. Chuggington, I believe their name is, and uh, we're going to start here. So uh, I thought for today's video, this is the uh, lineups or whatever, I thought for today's video I would try to play a game while also answering uh, questions that you might have, um, and that this is kind of like going to be a new model, because, uh, like, you know, for people who don't find, uh, inherently find playing uh, FIFA that interesting, maybe I can offer you, like, both entertainment and edification. So the idea is that I play and you learn. We're going to be, uh, like I said, I'm playing Swindon Town, my beloved Swindon Town. The idea is that I'm going to take Swindon Town all the way to the Premier League, although because I lack any kind of talent at this game, that's probably a bit of a long shot. Um, oh, that was a shot. I meant to pass. Not, not very good yet. Uh, so the question I wanted to answer today is, what is wrong with the United States economy? Submitted by Twitter, or via Twitter, not by Twitter. Twitter is what's right with the United States economy. So, uh, look at the ball movement for Swindon Town. Look at that. Let's just, let's just enjoy this for a second. Oof. Uh, so, uh, here's what's wrong with the U.S. economy. I can tell you pretty quickly. Uh, we are not consuming enough, but we are also not producing enough. And so our economy is not growing as fast as we'd like. Uh, the reason that jobs aren't being created in this economy is pretty complicated, but uh, it all boils down to that. Uh, the economy is not growing as fast as it needs to grow in order to create jobs. Now, some people will say, like, oh, it's companies' faults for not hiring, but, uh, you know, we live in a capitalistic society and you can't really blame companies for not hiring if they don't feel comfortable hiring. So uh, the question is, what is the solution? And that's an interesting problem that. Uh, that the President and Congress are facing right now. Um, and they're debating this, and I guess Obama's going to make a big speech on Thursday. And in that speech, he is probably not going to propose what all economists in the world wish he would propose. But I'm going to tell you what that is, uh, and then I'm going to tell you why he isn't going to propose it. We're 16 minutes into the game, and I think it's safe to say that here and there, uh, friendly debut Swindon Town uh, don't look particularly strong. Uh, by the way, I'm playing in this game somewhere. There's a player named John Green, but I can't, uh, I can't find him. Um, he hasn't, uh, he hasn't been involved in the action much. Oh, that's just, that's great defending guy. Um, so here's the thing. What would really work, uh, is that John Green? No. Where is John Green? Goal! Oh, wide left. Typical, typical play from Swindon Town. Um, here's what would really work and uh, it's not going to be done. What would really work would be a second stimulus package. Uh, one of the surprises of the stimulus to a lot of economists and um, a lot of amateur observers, there's a goal! There's a goal from John Green! John Green! John Green it gets that in the back of the net 10 times out of 10, and it, and it happened. Um, so uh, a lot of economists would like to see a stimulus package because the stimulus plan uh, that Obama came out with in 2008, which was very unpopular with a lot of uh, economists, um, worked. In fact, worked really, really well at uh, making making the recession less deep than it otherwise would have been, at uh, temporarily creating jobs. The problem is that it didn't work um, in terms of, it didn't work forever because it wasn't intended to last forever, and indeed it didn't last forever. John Green has a breakaway. So, um, oh. John Green puts it in the back of the net again. How do, you, how do you like them apples? You can't stop him. I don't know why he's bald, by the way. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to try to get him to grow some hair and possibly a mustache. But, uh, so, uh, you know, the, the stimulus plan wasn't created um, to, uh, you know, it, it was created to stimulate the economy, not to replace the economy. And when the stimulus spending stopped, uh, we noticed that uh, public sector job growth didn't just stop, it, it decreased, which was kind of the plan, but we thought that private sector job growth would, would grow uh, when it didn't. So what would really work, and uh, you find an interesting coalition of people now who are in favor of a stimulus, uh, and that includes like traditionally very conservative places like uh, like the Chamber of Commerce, for instance, which is, you know, like a, I don't think that the United States Chamber of Commerce has ever endorsed the Democratic candidate for president, certainly, um, and they won't be endorsing uh, President Obama in 2012. Uh, but they're in favor of another stimulus. Lots and lots of economists are. Uh, the reason it'll never happen is because it's completely politically inviolable in this time of talking about deficits and debts to, to uh, spend uh, a trillion dollars of government spending to uh, unnecessary slide tackle. That's going to be a penalty. I agree. That was my mistake. Um, to spend a trillion dollars of, 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 of 
tax money, great save, um, on, uh, you know, on stimulus. Uh, it's just not going to happen. The reason it's not going to happen is because even though it wouldn't actually affect the deficit necessarily, uh, it, it will seem like it's going to affect the deficit. And we live in this kind of sad political world where um, there's a lot of emphasis on scoring political points and not enough emphasis on, uh, you know, doing, doing what's right. But most economists agree that a stimulus would be uh, pretty useful right now, but only if it came uh, in concert with some actual uh, deficit reduction which would mean long-term deficit reduction over the next five or ten years. So, uh, so for instance, there's, there most, uh, there's quite a lot of talk about doing some sensible cutting of Medicare, for instance, uh, that could probably save us a lot more money over five years than uh, the stimulus rate that's, that, well, that was the wrong button, than the stimulus would cost us. So if we could save, you know, three or four trillion dollars and uh, spend a trillion dollars in stimulus, we could probably uh, decrease, you know, we could probably avert a, uh, a double dip recession here, and um, also uh, not not increase the debt, the, our overall public debt over the next five years. Sadly, that's probably not going to happen. Um, uh, but I want to talk in the second half here. I'm already up to nil, not to brag against uh, Casey Chuckington, the uh, the juggernaut of the third league of Bulgaria. I have no idea what these guys play, um, but. Uh, so, uh, and I, I genuinely don't, don't think this is a partisan problem. Like, I don't think this is a Republican problem or a Democratic problem or anything like that. But uh, we're having trouble getting anything done in Washington, if you haven't noticed. And the reasons for that are pretty interesting. As interesting as that goal by John Green, who just got his hat trick. Oh, man, if that guy had hair, he would be amazing. Look at that. Just waits for just beautiful finish. Um, so... Uh, so why is it? Why is it that like that that, that that the environment has become so much more partisan than it used to be? That everybody's interested in scoring political points. That there's much less uh, general interest in in making smart um, uh, smart decisions. Like why is it that when a lot of economists across you know the political spectrum of economists are agreeing that we should do something, uh, we still uh, don't do it? And the answer to that is that um, that I think most people in Congress are more afraid, like they have a greater chance of losing their seat in Congress during a primary than they do during the actual general election. So for those of you who aren't, uh, oh, wrong button. For those of you who aren't American, let me briefly explain how this works. Oh, a little bit wide there. John Green should have taken that shot. John Green hits that 10 times out of 10. So um, before you get, uh, you get to right, be in the general election, if you're a congressperson, you have to win your party's primary. So if you're a Republican, you have to beat all the other Republicans who want to be the congressperson. And if you're a Democrat, you have to beat all the other Democrats. John Green, four goals. Um, achievement unlocked, I'll say. He's so good at being a soccer player. He reminds me a lot of, uh, not only, uh, he reminds me a lot of me. Um, you know, I was a great striker in my day as a seven-year-old soccer player. Um, but uh, so you got to win your primary before you can win the, the election. And because most uh, congressional districts, because of uh, redistricting over the last 20 or 30 years, most congressional districts are overwhelmingly Republican or Democrat. Like they're, you know, 90-10 in a lot of cases for registered voters who are uh, Republicans versus Democrats. And uh, that's a really interesting, that, that, sorry, I keep saying that's really interesting because I'm trying to play soccer while I'm talking. But that's a, that's a big problem. Because it means that they have, you have no, if you're the Democratic nominee in, you know, the Upper West Side of Manhattan, you are going to win. There is no chance, nice to cross there, big guy, there is no chance that you're going to lose. Um, and so your only, the only threat to you is in the primary. The only threat to you is that someone comes along and says, you're not liberal enough, or you're not conservative enough, so we're going to get, we're going to get rid of you. Uh, this pushes people to the ex to the this pushes our representatives to the extremes to the poles of uh, of our political system, so that they have to what's called uh, pleasing the base, right? They have to please the base. They have to make sure that the uh, you know the hardcore people who go out and vote in the Republican primary or the Democratic primary that those people are excited to vote for them, and that leads to I think that really fuels the gridlock in America because instead of having uh, you know, a conversation where everybody says, you know, 
uh, both the Chamber of Commerce and the unions, two groups of people who rarely agree about anything, uh, and a lot of economists think that it would make sense to have a stimulus with a deficit reduction package, and that deficit reduction package could look like you know, X, Y, or Z, but as long as it you know, reduced the deficit um, more than the stimulus uh, would increase it, then it, it's not a problem. Instead of saying that, uh, we all just say, well, we know in advance that, uh, that, that the last thing that we need to do is spend more money. Well, we're going to be spending more money one way or another. So uh, that's, that's not, the, that's not the, like, the discourse to have. Um, so that's a lot of my disappointment right now with the American political system. And I don't think there's an easy solution to it because that redistricting stuff, it happened over a long period of time. And it's going to take a long period of time if we're going to... Um, uh, to really address it, and there's no political, there's really no political will to address it because, you know, people who are in Congress like having these, you know, or at least they think they think it's good for them to have these uh, these districts that are 90% Democrat or 90% Republican because they think it allows them to keep getting elected. In fact, what it does is it just pushes them further and further away from you know the values that that initially made them want to be in public service. Um, oh no! Oh, somehow that guy managed to miss. That was. I was pretty pretty poor there, F.C. Chuggington, um, Brano Brano Wiki. I bet I said that wrong. Hundred percent chance I said that. Fliss is coming on. Um, I want to see if I can get John Green one more goal here in the last eight minutes of this uh, this epic win for Swindon Town. Hopefully, uh, this will be the first in a series of videos in which uh, I take Swindon Town uh, to the very heights, uh, to to places they've never visited before. I I I am a huge fan of Swindon Town uh, since their miraculous win over Arsenal in uh, a game of FIFA 11 I played with my brother, and I, I believe deep in my heart that uh, th this team could be the next Chelsea, that is, the next club with absolutely no history to buy their way uh, into Premier League success. Sorry, Chelsea fans. Uh, you know I'm a Liverpool supporter. It's nothing personal. Um, I do like a lot of the, the players from Chelsea, and I like the way they uh, play. All right. Um, what else was I going to say? Anyway, I think that's the problem with our with our economy. I think the, the ultimate problem with our economy is the political problem. But there is uh, some sort of inherent uh, economic weakness that we have. Also, uh, I should mention that the biggest problem with our economy right now is Europe, um, which is not our fault. So Europe's failure to get their debt in order is a big, big problem. But that's for another day. For today, we're in the 90th minute, and I'm not going to be able to rant about uh, how much I hope Germany and the Netherlands are willing to take on a lot of Greek debt. Look at that scoreline. Jay Green, Jay Green, Jay Green, Jay Green. You can't stop him. You can't stop him. He's just, you know, he puts the ball in the back of the net ten times out of ten. All right, thanks for coming and watching uh, Sports with John. As you can see, Jay Green player the match 9.7 performance. Uh, you will not see me and I will not see you, but I will be playing FIFA with Swindon Town again soon. Best wishes.